On tonight's CTV News, dairy farmers are facing a rough season, seasonal changes are affecting health in the rural sector, and restricted drivers face new hurdles if they break the law. This is CTV News, I'm Grant Mangan. The government has shown its commitment towards the rebuild, investing money into one of Canterbury's universities. The government is showing their support to Lincoln University, investing $107.5 million into the rebuild of their science facilities. We have committed an investment today which will ensure that Lincoln is not just rebuilt, uh, but is uh, uh, bigger and stronger than before, uh, and that'll be good for the primary sector, good for uh, the university and, frankly, the other research institutes here, uh, and good for Canada. The university lost the use of 40% of its academic floor space following the Canterbury earthquakes. This government investment will cover one third of the projected cost to rebuild the entire campus, which has a price tag of $349 million. Um, we've got an institution uh, that will be doing some uh, amazing research in fantastic uh, 21st century uh, facilities uh, that will give our uh, students the opportunity to take their knowledge to the world. The university is focusing on growing its undergraduate enrolments and the rebuild of key facilities and the next stage of returning to sustainable operations. The boost from the government will help them head in that direction. I think there's some real momentum developing around Lincoln uh, and it will take a year or so but it will lift enrolments both domestically and internationally. Lincoln University is a specialist land-based university contributing to education and research in the agriculture industry. New Zealand's agricultural industry survives and competes by increasing productivity every year, by doing things smarter, by coming up with new innovations, uh, new technologies, new breeding techniques, the whole thing. And uh, we have a history of great innovation and this, will, uh, this is a, a marker in the ground which says we're committed to continuing to improve that, not just in the next few years but in, in the generations ahead. An initial $7.5 million will be made to the university by the end of the year, with an additional $100 million being paid in instalments throughout the project. Construction is expected to start at the end of next year and is due to be finished by 2019. Emma Cropper, CTV News. July is Women's Refuge Awareness Month. Joelle Bautista spoke to a local refuge to find out what's happening in the community. It's not okay to say she was asking for it. It's not okay to be cruel to your boy. It's not okay that in Christchurch, over 500 women and children need support for new family violence issues a year. For Women's Refuge Awareness Month, the five organisations around Christchurch are spreading awareness about the cause. Battered Women's Refuge Manager Lois Herbert says providing a place of safety is the most important thing. Christchurch Battered Women's Refuge operates a confidential address house, a place where women and children can go and feel safe. Lois Herbert says the women are allowed to stay there as long as they need until they find other accommodation. With the current housing shortage in Christchurch, people need to stay longer. The average stay at the moment is uh, almost 30 days, so that's a long period of time. And that's because of the housing situation in Christchurch, and that's gone up dramatically since 2010, when the average, I just worked it out yesterday, was nine days. So that's a really big change. Lois Herbert says it's important for community to be aware of family violence. Many victims of family violence feel isolated from their friends, families and networks. The support worker says it's not OK for anyone to turn a blind eye. It's better to ask the question of the person and say, I know what's happening in your family, can I help you? What can I do to help? Than to leave it. You know, because if you let it go, it feels to the victim as if our society's condoning that. An important part of the trust is not only looking after women and children, but caring for the men. So it's really important that we stand up and we say, our society doesn't need this, our women and children need protection, and our men need support to be the good men that we know they are. The Battered Women's Trust has a special focus on offenders, making sure they receive the help they need. We've taken two years to 
to make sure that that program runs really successfully and it's making an enormous difference and there's been a lot of uptake. Men, uh, uh, men abusers have shown to be much more willing to engage with services than we expected. So that's really positive and it's an important part of what we do now. The Women's Refuge Collective received government funding to assist them with their services. The Battered Women's Trust say this only covers half of their operational costs. The refuges are collecting donations this week to keep the key organisations running and allow them to help others in their recovery. Raising awareness is about making sure that people who need the services know where to go and know how to get those services and can get them at the time they need them, even if it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Joel Batista, CTV News. The Christchurch Hospital is about to lose its only on-site car park as construction work commences. Christchurch Hospital's parking woes are about to worsen. Within a few weeks, the hospital will lose its only on-site car park. Just under 2,000 car parks were available to patients, visitors and staff at Christchurch Hospital and Christchurch Women's Hospital. Of those, 750 were on the street, either free or metered, and 1,200 were off-street car parks. But 7 to 800 on the old brewery site are set to go when construction on the Metro Sports facility begins next year. And within a few weeks, the hospital will lose an added 130 car parks due to the redevelopment of the hospital set to begin in September. The Canterbury District Health Board are working on a solution for parking and transport to the hospital site during and after the redevelopment. Solutions include a park and ride plan and a revised traffic flow around the hospital. The CDHB's chief executive says the hospital site will spend the next six to seven years as a construction site. CDHB member Aaron Kewen believes a coordinated approach is needed between the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Authority, the New Zealand Transport Agency, the Christchurch City Council and Environment Canterbury if a solution is to be found. Canterbury farmers could be facing a rough season with dairy prices dropping globally. A global drop in dairy prices could be putting local farmers on edge. Dairy prices slumped to 8.9% in the fortnightly global dairy trade. Vaughan Beza, Federated Farmers North Canterbury dairy spokesperson, told the press the drop was alarming. He says we're having to burn our checkbooks now. When we know how far it's going to fall, we can adjust. But don't know if we're going to see it drop another 5%. It's a roller coaster ride. The prices for whole milk powder had led the decline with 10.9%. The slump in dairy prices could see a $3.8 billion pay cut next season. But Nathan Guy, the primary industries minister, is calling dairy farmers resilient. Fonterra has previously forecast a farm gate milk price of $7 a kilogram of milk solids for the next season. Well down from this year's estimated payout of $8.40. A rural economist for ASB Bank believes the price slide was because of a strong season, effectively flooding the market. The dairy sector plays an important role in the New Zealand economy, contributing more than $14 billion to the national economy last year. If you're caught on the roads without a full licence, there's a way you could avoid paying fines. It's part of a campaign being run by the police for one month. Emma Cropper has more on the story. Targeting learner drivers, the police are cracking down on those not complying with the rule book. Young drivers caught breaching the conditions of their restricted or learner licences or escape penalty but won't be completely let off the hook. The drivers are being offered a chance to attend a driver safety seminar instead of receiving the $100 fine and 35 demerit point punishment. A spokesperson for the police says teenage drivers were among the most likely to be involved in road crashes. The seminars will give those drivers a chance to focus on car insurance, peer pressure and road safety and hopefully alert them to their behaviour. In Canterbury alone, more than 19,000 tickets were issued for the drivers breaching the terms of their licence. And changes have already been made to learner licences. The New Zealand Transport Agency proposed a five-year limit for all learner and restricted drivers, forcing them to become fully licensed within that time frame. Because more than half of the drivers with a learner or restricted licence have been holding that for more than five years. Still to come, the ups and downs of the seasons are affecting the health of people living in the rural sector.
Southern Newsweek is an Otago-based news bulletin. Produced locally in Dunedin, it's your chance to catch up on everything that's happening in the community. Southern Newsweek, Saturday at 6.30pm and repeated Sunday at 10am, right here on CTV. My son's helped me greatly with my independence now that I've got more mobility. Mum, I've been looking into stand assist chairs from more mobility. They recline back with a footrest, then when you want to get out of them they stand you up. You can even sleep on them. More Mobility can bring one out for a free trial. There's even electric beds too. What do you think? For more range and more expert advice, see More Mobility, corner Clarence and Princess Streets off Blenheim Road. What a difference More Mobility makes. Do you wear an earpiece or earmuffs? Do you have trouble hearing people or the TV? Do you suffer from itchy ears? Then it's time to clear the ear. Their gentle microsuction technique is safe and efficient and performed by a fully qualified, trained, registered nurse. Call for an appointment or clear the ear can come to you. We also have swim, noise or aeroplane plugs. 0800 Ear Clean. We were in behind the Rose and Thistle but have now moved opposite St Andrews College. 304 Papua Nui Road. Avoid the monkeys when it comes to relocating. Trust A1 Movers, a family business since 1993 that guarantees a professional job every time. We carefully handle and wrap your valued items, ensuring they have a safe journey. Secure storage and insurance options are also available. A1 Movers, the careful, caring, moving company. Oi! Welcome to Caltex Redwood. We're a family owned business proudly supporting our local community. We're open 24 seven for fuel and shop goods and we have an amazing team of people ready to help you. Save at least six cents per litre using AA Smart Fuel Cards. We also offer great value on our LPG bottle fills. We have a full workshop and Bridgestone tyre centre. Our mechanics and tyre technicians will get your car sorted. Caltex Redwood, we're just down from St Bede's on Main North Road. Caltex Redwood, what drives you? Tomorrow Today is your science programme, presenting a comprehensive overview of the latest trends in science and research. Tomorrow Today, Tuesday night at 7.30pm, right here on CTV. Farmers face the ups and downs of seasonal changes and natural disasters. So how badly does it affect their health? Emma Cropper has the story. Depression is one of the largest issues facing rural communities. And it's not going away, in fact, it's growing. Farmer's daughter Pip O'Neill knows all about it. Her father lost his battle with depression just over a year ago. Well, we saw Dad going through a whole lot. He had depression for five or six years before he passed away. And whenever he would just go quiet and go into himself, and we knew when he was having a really tough time, but we you know, never really talked about it because he didn't want anyone to know that he had depression. The father of three ran a 5,500 hectare farm in Otago, always maintaining a staunch persona in front of the family. Dad to me was on a pedestal and he was my, you know, my idol and I, you know, I was so proud of him but I never, never told, you know, mm. as he did. I, and I'm sure he knew I loved him and was very proud of him but we never, you know, the relationship was we'd always talk about rugby and farming and what the racehorses were doing and all those things rather than me saying, Dad, how are you feeling? You with know? an outgoing personality, it was the perfectionist within him that began to take over. His laugh was the laugh you could hear above the crowd and he was a real fun, loving kind of guy. And I think he just couldn't handle, you know, it was that feeling of the weakness and that feeling of being really down and, um, and not, you know, we tried getting him help but he just didn't really want to, I don't think, want to accept it. Pip opened up to Sir John about her father's battles. But those battles are something JK's all too familiar with himself. Since 2007, Sir John's been an advocate for depression after speaking out about his own fight with the illness. I was incredibly, um, in incredibly bad shape. So for me, the reaching out was a real necessity. And once again, I, I just wish I had done it earlier because um, I wouldn't have had to go through what I went through, you know, suffering alone, thinking that it was an illness that was unique to me. Um, so I think, you know, for me, 
the reaching out part was out of desperation. He understands the pressure on farmers to fit the stereotypical, staunch, self-reliant male image. But when it comes to depression, he believes it's misunderstood. I think depression for me, I thought it was a weakness rather than an illness. Uh, you know, one of the things I keep saying now is actually an illness. Um, but because you don't treat it and because you can't see it, um, you really internalise it. Farming's no longer what it used to be. Gone are the days of running a small family patch of land. Now they're multi-million dollar businesses. And for those in charge, they face escalating compliance costs and extreme weather combined with the normal stresses of life that just don't help. An isolation factor, uh, things like your relationships, the finances, uh, the weather, all sorts of things compound it. And it's never usually just one thing, but a series of things that build you to that tipping point where you feel that you can't cope anymore. 18 months ago, Federated Farmers launched this When Life's a Bitch campaign. It's in line with the recent suicide rates. Believe it or not, they're worse in the rural areas than in the urban areas. 16 per 100,000 people take their own life in the rural areas, compared to just over 11 in the urban areas. It's been uh, our, one of our best keep secrets for a very, very long time, and it's taken us a really long time to, to get people out and about and talking about it, and even being able to actually just broach the subject. It's been really hard work. But farmers are no longer fighting alone. The issue is no longer a secret and help is not far away. Local support systems are now set up to help as a first port of call when disaster strikes. We uh, work with farmers who, uh, in, in, during an adverse event or on an individual basis where farmers are in need of help. Uh, we are all from a rural background, we understand the rural issues and we are, we are the first line uh, of contact really in, in difficult times. Which means these guys, the farmers, the fathers, brothers and sons aren't left to battle alone on the farm and their wives, sisters and daughters won't be left without the ones they love. Emma Cropper, CTV News. Public consultation has commenced for the vision for central city living in Christchurch. More than 3,000 of central Christchurch residents left the city after the earthquakes. The Christchurch Central Development Unit is hoping to attract people back to Christchurch with a plan of modern and vibrant residential areas. The CCDU released the draft residential chapter of the Christchurch Central Recovery Plan called A Livable City. The plan puts forward the vision and framework for residential developments within the city's four avenues. Hoping to stimulate development, CCDU Director Warwick Isaacs says the recovery of the central city hinged on the return of the residential as well as the commercial development. Wanting to see 20,000 people living in the city, Warwick Isaacs says it's crucial to attract people to live in a modern, world-class environment. The draft residential chapter document can be viewed at the CCDU website. Encouraging the public to give feedback, consultation will run until the 13th of August. Joel Batista, CTV News. Coming up, a horse running wild in the city has found a new home. Join Graham Sinclair and the team at Gone Fishing as they bring you great stories, fishing tips and beautiful scenery. Gone Fishing, Friday night at 8.30 right here on CTV. Get rid of that damaging and unsightly moss, mould and lichen from your path, drive or roof with Mossbuster. Mossbuster is a no-bleach, non-abrasive, biodegradable solution that has over 35 years of proven results. Mossbuster costs less than half the price of other well-known products and can be yours for less than a dollar a litre. You just spray it on and let Mother Nature do the rest. Check out our website to find the best solution to your moss, mould and grime problem. Order online or call us now on 0800 88 1000. Introducing my free view. This fella doesn't just preserve your right to watch free digital TV. It fits your viewing around your life. Too busy putting out fires? Record at the touch of a button. Want to watch one, one channel, channel and, and record, record another? another? You, you can. can. And if you need to nip away, hit pause. Even a live show. For a one-off payment, you can enjoy free view when it suits you. 
not someone else. It's like having your own TV station at home without monthly fees or contracts. My Freeview, it's Kiwi for TV. Hi, I'm Steve and welcome to Carpet Kingdom. At Carpet Kingdom, we stock a massive range of carpets and we're also the largest vinyl stockers in the South Island. And not only do we have an excellent range in store, but you can purchase our stock online. We offer free measure and quotes. We have our own installation team. We ship nationwide, so come on down and see us at Carpet Kingdom. 312 Wilson's Road in Waltham, just off Bryham Street, or visit us online at carpetkingdom.co.nz. Hi, I'm Caitlin, the naturopath here at Staywell Pharmacy. Working with the pharmacist, I use herbal and nutritional medicine to recommend natural alternatives for your health. This can be to counteract any side effects of your medication, general health advice, or natural options for you and your family. I'm also available for consultations. So come in and see us at Staywell Pharmacy. 27 Shand Road, Hornby. Staywell Pharmacy, live well, stay well. The world has a great deal to tell. Journalists from across the world report on their home nations and the experiences of the people who live there. World Stories. Beauty Foal the horse was a familiar sight around the central city until her owners auctioned her off to a new home. Marcus Gibbs visited her at a secret location and met her controversial owner down on the farm and loving it. Christchurch horse icon Beauty Foal has traded the city life for the country after a local animal activist won her at auction. Got her off the streets of Christchurch at last. <laughs> Yeah, definitely happy about that. Nikki saw her chance to save Beauty Foal when the horse was sent to auction at the end of June. The young filly had spent most of her life living on the streets until she was impounded by authorities when her former owner Richard Hayden lost control of his other horse and it was hit by a car on Brougham Street. Nikki runs a South Canterbury rescue centre for horses and knew she had to save her, spending $1,100 at auction just to bring Beautiful home to the farm. She's settling in well. But she's um, clicked on really well now and she's had a good roll so she's nice and relaxed and getting dirty like a horse should at this time of the year. Surrounded by other horses, this is more of a home than the streets of Christchurch. Beauty Foal's hoofs are worn flat because of the city's harsh terrain. She didn't have a, a good stable diet. She was living in um, an area where there'd been an earthquake and there was rubble and glass. Because of her reputation as an animal activist and neglected horse rescuer, Nikki has faced flack from the public since news of the sale spread. We've got nothing to hide. Yep, we have a few skinny horses and if people are going to ring up and complain about them, I've got no problem about that especially if the SPCA come out and check on them because that's what that's what I lobby for that's you know that's that's what I do I want to see them out there looking after the horses welfare an animal control officer from the Salwan District Council visited Beauty Foal while CTV News was filming. He had no problems with the condition of any of the horses on the property. She looks like a really happy horse actually. She's uh, got some equine company and um, yeah, seems really, really well, looks well and uh, yeah, seems happy. Most of the hate seems to stem from a very public trial in 2010 when Nikki was accused of stealing five horses from Emerald Lodge three years earlier. Nikki alleged the Emerald Lodge stud was financially struggling and wasn't feeding its horses. She rescued them and hid their new home from the police and the SBCA. When her case went to trial, she was acquitted by the judge, but her name has been tarnished. People still think I steal horses. Um, I never stole those horses at Tui Creek. We never got, it got acquitted. We didn't even get to put our side of the case across. These photos show how undernourished these horses were when she brought them to her farm. Now, after a few years of love and attention, they look a lot healthier. We worm, we spend thousands at the vet. I've just paid off an $8,000 vet bill for work that we've had done on a few horses. Um, the same day I rescued um, Beautiful, I had to put one of my old Emerald Lodge horses down. I paid $500 just so I could have her buried at home here. 
bit of respect. This farm is home to about 40 rescued horses and another 15 that have been bred. The family doesn't believe they should be criticised for the work they do. It costs us a lot of money. We go out of our way to help so many people. Um, there's cases we don't tell anyone about because they're so controversial. After nine years of rescuing horses, Nikki Sabritsky knows this is her calling and she won't be stopping her work anytime soon. Marcus Gibbs, CTV News. If you're driving around the Christchurch Central City, CTV's traffic update will assist you navigating the repairs taking place. Hello travellers, to help you plan your journey around the central city, here's some tips on how to get around this week. Madras Street is down to one lane from Latimer Square to Bailey Ave and this will be slow during peak times. Durham Street is down to one lane from Salisbury Street through to Hereford Street. Barbados Street is down to one lane from Bailey Ave to Kilmore Street. And if you are travelling north or south through the city, make use of Fitzgerald Ave whenever possible to avoid being caught in heavier traffic. To keep up to date on what's happening on the Central City Roads, stay tuned and in the meantime, visit the Transport for Christchurch website. And good news for travellers travelling on State Highway 1 from Hornby up to Yoldhurst Road, that is Carmen Roads and Masham Roads. NZTA, who have been uh, four laning that strip of road, have almost complete, so by next week it should be very smooth travelling along that section of the Western Corridor. Finally tonight, your regional weather. Kia ora Canterbury, here's your region's weather. In Timaru, 8 degrees. And in Tamuka and Geraldine, 11. Looking now at Rakaia, Ashburton and Methvin, 7 degrees. Hope you've had a lovely day, Darfield, Leeston and Ralston, hitting seven today. Looking now at Lincoln and Christchurch, seven degrees. Heading over to Akadawa, they had the low of the region on six. Crossing the Waimakadiri River and looking at Rangiora, Kaipoi and Amberley, seven degrees. And further north in Culverden, Hanma Springs and Cheviant, they hit 7 today. And up the very top in Kaikoura, a mild 8 degrees. But what's in store for tomorrow? In Timaru, mostly fine and sunny with light winds. Do expect it to be cold with frosts though, hitting an overnight low of 3 and a high of 11 degrees. In Ashburton it'll be mostly fine and sunny with light winds, will be cold with frosts as well, an overnight low of 3 and a high of 10 degrees. In Christchurch a mostly fine day in store for you with sunny skies and light winds, expected to be cold and frosty, hitting an overnight low of 1 and a high of 10 degrees. And in Kaikoura, mostly fine and sunny as well with light winds. It's going to be frosty in the morning and of course cold conditions. An overnight low of 1 and a high of 9 degrees. Looking at the other areas around the region, Tamuka and Geraldine, a chilly minus 3 and a high of 10. Methvin and Rakaia, a low of minus 1 and a high of 10 degrees. Darfield, Leeston, Ralston and Lincoln hitting a high of 10 and an overnight low of minus 1. Heading over to Akadawa, fine for most parts of the day with a high of 1 and low of minus 1. Rangiora and Kaipui keep warm with an overnight low of minus 1 and a high of 10. Culverton, Hanma Springs and Cheviot fine with a high of 10 and overnight low of minus 1. And looking ahead for what's in store for the rest of Canterbury. Sunny periods at first on Saturday but high cloud increasing during the day. Expected still to be cold with moderate southwesterly winds developing. 
Sunny periods at first on Sunday as well, but cloud increasing during the day with moderate cold southwesterlies. A period of fresh, very cold winds and wintry showers on Sunday night. Cloudy on Monday and Tuesday. Expect a few light showers or drizzle patches at times, with light snow flurries above 200 metres. But dry spells are expected and it will be cold with moderate southerly winds. It'll become fine and sunny on Wednesday though, with cool southwesterlies dying out. And that's all for your region's weather. Have a lovely evening. And that's CTV News for Thursday. I'm Grant Mangan. Good night. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand On Air.